Hello everybody, I'm Gleb and this is 5G course on my Understanding IoT channel. Uh, for today, I'm gonna talk about such interesting concept as bandwidth part concept in 5G. So, as you may already know, 5G is all about um, flexibility and the maximum cell bandwidth in 5G is up to 400 megahertz. So, in some cases, it may be extensively broadened in some uh, Internet of Things cases, let's say. Yeah? So, uh, one motivation, one aspect that stands behind of this concept is to uh, allow less complex user equipment camps on a broadband cell, yeah? So, there is a fundamental difference between 5G and previous generations. Uh, in 5G, user equipment doesn't have to support the whole bandwidth. UE can support only a bandwidth part, a part uh, of the bandwidth with specific subcarrier spacing. So it allows us to uh, make less complex UE, yeah, and allows them to, to camp on, on a broadband cell, yeah. Another aspect that stands behind of it, it's, it's, to, it's to have a different subcarrier spacing for different use cases. It is a kind of um, uh, adapting quality of service for physical layer. Uh, for example, in idle mode, we can configure user equipment to uh, operate with narrow subcarrier spacing with uh, uh, narrow band part, bandwidth part, yeah, in order to uh, save uh, battery power in order to uh, have um, a good uh, connection in idle mode with narrow subcarrier spacing, yeah? But in case of connected mode, when UE require to have um, enhanced mobile broadband services, we may configure for them um, large bandwidth part with large subcarrier spacing and as a result short symbol duration yeah in order to support such uh, extremely uh, broadband cases so uh, let's look at um, uh, how user equipment and network operates with uh, bandwidth parts yeah um, when UE in idle mode uh, and wants to camp on cell, it operates with initial bandwidth parts. Uh, while operating with initial bandwidth part, UE uh, read um, system information block. And within uh, SSB information, uh, UE finds all necessary information about all possible uh, others bandwidth parts with different subcarrier spacing, yeah? So when UE in connected mode, user equipment can operate uh, at the same time with up to four different bandwidth parts. But only one bandwidth, bandwidth part can be in active mode, let's say this one, yeah? Only one bandwidth part with uh, particular subcarrier spacing can be in, uh, can be active in particular time. Um, I guess this is for the purpose of, again, to make it less uh, complex uh, for UE vendors and UE equipment. Uh, we can change user equipment while uh, being in connected mode can change 
bandwidth part uh, via RRC messages, RRC, or DCI scheduling, or just by inactivity timer, timer expiry. So while in connected mode, UE can change uh, different subcarrier spacings and different bandwidth parts uh, in frequency the main location. Yeah. So let's say in this uh, time and frequency uh, location, UE operates within this bandwidth part. Then using DCI command it switched uh, to this bandwidth part with larger subcarrier spacing, yeah? And this, uh, by the timer, let's say, you switch to the bandwidth part with narrow subcarrier spacing and narrow bandwidth to uh, save better power. So again and again, when we're talking about Bandwidth parts, subcarrier spacing, uh, different resource grids in 5G. It's basically all the same. Yeah, it, it is a little bit confusing, but basically it's all the same. It's all about adapting quality of service requirements for different use cases for physical layer. Yeah, and to allow less complex UE camps on broadband cell. Yeah, so this is fundamental difference between 5G and 4G is again when UE doesn't need to support the whole bandwidth. UE can support only a bandwidth part. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this short video about bandwidth part concept in 5G. If you like it, you can like and subscribe.